This video is brought to you by Grizzly, purveyors of fine machinery since 1983. And right now you can take advantage of a special offer using media code 4 eyes 10 Make sure to stick around to the end of the video for more details. If I had it to do over again, I think there's actually a much quicker and simpler way to build this bench that would actually give you a better result. That said, this was an idea that I'd been wanting to explore for a while, so in that sense I'm glad that I did it this way. I'll get into what I would change later, but just to foreshadow a bit, it has entirely to do with the design of the top and the pattern that I had CNC routed into it. So I guess the good news is, if you don't have access to a CNC router, you could still build this thing. And it's actually pretty easy. There really isn't that much to it. So there are only three pieces that make up this entire bench. A top and two legs. I started off with the top because it was a big beefy piece and I just wanted to get it out of the way first. I don't think I've ever really gone over how I mill my lumber in a video before. And I think this top probably exemplifies a scenario where good milling is crucial more than anything else that I've made on the channel so far at least. So this is probably a good time to do it. So after I had selected all the pieces that I was going to use for the top, I took them over to the joiner. The top is made out of 8 quarter maple, which is just shy of 2 inches thick. The finished piece is going to be closer to about an inch and a half thick, so there's plenty of room for fine tuning the wood to get it nice and flat. Once each piece had a face that was good and flat, I turned them on their edges and took a couple more passes to get one of the edges flat. So by the time that's finished, you're left with one good face and one good edge that are nice and flat and form a perfect 90 degrees. Next I take my pieces over to the table saw and cut them a little wider than what I'll need them to be in the end. So I've got three pieces. Say for example I wanted a finished top that was 18 inches wide. I'd cut them to about 6.5 inches at this point and then cut the whole thing to the final width later. Anyway. I run the piece with the jointed edge on the fence so that when the cuts are made I'm left with a piece that has two parallel edges and is equally wide across the entire length of the board. The last step in the milling process for me is thicknessing my pieces on the planer. The joiner gave us one flat face as you'll recall. So here we're going to make the other face flat and we're going to bring down the thickness of the pieces so that they're all consistently an inch and a half thick all the way across the board. Sorry, here I'm just having a little fun with my new camera. Gotta love that slow-mo. And with that, I was ready to start gluing up my top. Here I'm just scraping and sanding off some excess glue. The new camera also makes doing time lapses easier. Now I'm gonna set the top aside for a bit to focus on the base. I'm going to be making the pieces for the base out of a couple of leftover chunks of maple that I had laying around from other projects. So I started by cross cutting the scrap to lop off the pieces that I'd actually be using. Next I ripped all of the pieces to their approximate width. These pieces had all been plain before, so they're already nice and square, but since they were from different pieces of stock, they aren't equally thick. So I gave them all another few passes to expose some fresh wood and to equal everything out. Next I took them back to the crosscut sled and cut all of what will end up being the horizontal pieces to their finished lengths. For the vertical pieces, I'm going to cut a 15 degree bevel on each of their ends. This will make it so that the legs end up as sort of rectangles that splay out. My original idea was to actually keep the trapezoidal shape of the Nelson bench legs, but splay them out as well. I drew out a few different versions of the idea, but the two angles just weren't really working together that well, so I opted to keep it rectangular instead. Here I'm transferring the angle of the miters I just made to the horizontal pieces. Then I'm going to take them over to my table saw and tilt the blade to match the line. 
In theory, I could just set the blade to 15 degrees also, but there's usually some error involved, so it's actually easier to just eyeball it and dial it in for this sort of application, at least in my opinion. Then I cut a bevel on all of the horizontal pieces so that they matched the miter cuts. With all the pieces for the legs cut out, I started assembling them. The real Nelson bench uses finger joints in these locations, but I decided to keep things simple and just use good old fashioned butt joints. Before you freak out, all these joints are going to be screwed together as well, so don't worry, they're going to be plenty strong. In this shot, now you can see the purpose for all the cuts and how it all comes together. After everything was dry, I came back and reinforced everything with some screws. You won't be able to see any of these in the finished piece. Half of them are going to be on the bottom, and the others will be in between the base and the top. But for good measure, I'm going to conceal the top screws just in case things don't line up exactly as planned. So, while I'm sanding, I'd like to take a minute to thank all of my Patreon sponsors. New to the list this month are Ingstrom Design, Matt, Shamey, Joel, another Matt, Alexander, Hiram, another Matt, Gons, Bob, Delano, Harold, Stephen, and a new addition to my ever-elongating list of favorite names, Scoop Pralines. And finally, an extra special thank goes out to Todd Bart. I know I say it in almost every project video that I make, but it still isn't enough, so I'll say it again. Thank you guys for all of your support and for enabling me to do what I do. As a special thanks to everybody who's supporting me at the $5 or above tier, I'm going to be sending out these custom Four Eyes Field Notes booklets. So what that means is I need your addresses if I don't already have them. So be on the lookout for a message from me in early July with full instructions on updating your profile with your current address. Now, I would never tell anybody to sign up just to get a booklet, but if you do like the show and you want to learn how you can support it and you don't mind having a booklet as a side effect, there's a link to my Patreon page in the description. Check it out, and as always, no pressure. The last thing to do for the base pieces was color them. At first I thought about staining or even painting. I've never had great luck with black stain, but my buddy Johnny Brook from Crafted Workshop Check out his channel if you haven't already, by the way. So Johnny heard me talking about this on my podcast and recommended this leather dye. He said he had used it on a couple projects before and it worked well, so I figured I'd give it a shot. I gotta say, thanks Johnny, because this stuff is awesome. I was really happy with the outcome and I'm definitely gonna try it again on some future projects when I feel like experimenting with color. Okay, back to the top. So earlier in the video, I had mentioned that if I were to build this piece again, I would do this part a bit differently. What I would do is pretty much just stop right here, or maybe throw a little bevel onto the underside of the top just to give it a little bit more design. But the whole point of this project going in was to make a bench inspired by the Nelson bench. So it wouldn't really make much sense if I just stopped here for this project. So here was the idea. The Nelson bench is made up of a bunch of slats, which is probably the most defining aesthetic of the piece. Again, I wanted to do something similar, but different. So my idea was to CNC route a design or pattern that kind of paid homage to the slats. So I came up with this sort of broken up line pattern. I tried a few different versions in my drawings, but ultimately landed on this one because I liked how no lines went through the center portion, which kind of represents the thick center support of the Nelson bench. I had the CNC routing done at a local sign shop, and it took way longer than I thought it was going to take. I guess it makes sense though. It was a lot of routing and maple's pretty hard, so you really have to take a lot of small passes. Once the routing was done, it left a lot of burn marks on the inside of the cuts, which would have taken days to sand clean. So I came up with the idea of painting the insides black instead. I think it would have been nicer looking if they were bare wood, but I think the black looks alright too, and there was just no way I was going to sit there sanding for that long. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I hope you like what you're seeing, and if you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks. You know, I don't get to respond to every comment that you guys leave, but I do try to read everything, and I do listen to what you guys say. 
And I know that a small but fairly vocal minority of people would really prefer if my voiceovers were a little more straightforward and stuck strictly to woodworking. I'm often accused of being too philosophical and people would like me to tone down the poetic aspects of the production. So with this video I actually made a conscious effort to make it a bit more of a tutorial and to keep the bulk of the dialogue about the actual piece. So speaking of the piece, you can call it what you will. A bench, a coffee table, a knockoff inspired by, a compromise, a cop out, a nice use of leather dye, a painful place for passers-by to load off and sit on, a terrible place for coffee drips and stain streaks to get on. You can call it pretty much anything under the sun, but me, well, I'm just happy to call this one done. Special thanks to Grizzly for sponsoring this video. As I mentioned in the top of the video, right now Grizzly is offering a special 10% discount to all of my viewers on all of the Grizzly machines that you saw me using in this video and more by using the media code 4 eyes 10 I put direct links to all of the products in the description and you can see more information about the deal by visiting foureyes.com slash grizzly. See you next time.